Get ready for the Splash Live, Greater West Bloomfield's dedicated update show. Events, businesses, and people. Anything and anyone causing a ripple in the community. And now, let's dive in to the Splash Live. Good morning. Welcome to the Splash Live. Dave Scott in our Splash Studio. See, take a look. Good to be with you this morning in West Bloomfield on an absolutely perfect, kind of breezy, nice, warm, spring, almost summer-like day. Thank you for joining us. This is uh, this is the Splash Live, part of 90 minutes of live local television here on Civic Center TV each and every Monday through Friday. We start out with a splash that is very local, covers our lake, lakes area rather comprehensively, hence the splash, lake splash, obviously you get that. Then Tyler's in at 10 o'clock for the Megacast. Taking a wider look, as you can see the state of Michigan map on our screen, slightly wider look at our area. Our programs are easy to watch each and every day on cable in the greater West Bloomfield area and Comcast Channel 15 on AT&T Channel 99. You're also welcome to watch us on our website at civiccentertv.com. We're on Facebook and also on YouTube. Just look for civiccentertv.com. And of course, we can be found each and every day on 89.3 Lakes FM, and that makes it easy. You can jump from your home right into your car. No problem at all. Thank you for tuning in wherever you happen to be today. Good to have you with us. Weather-wise, in the greater West Bloomfield area, very, very nice. Not only today, but all the way through our Memorial Day weekend. We've got 67 degrees for a high today. A little bit cooler, um, and it's going to stay cool for tomorrow. But as we head into the weekend, 72 on Friday, and then warming up into the 80s over Memorial Weekend and Memorial Day should be absolutely spectacular here with very warm day. Temperatures in the upper 70s to 80s. 80s and sunshine, partly cloudy skies. Now, the one thing you might notice is it is a little bit hazy, and that is a result of certainly some fires out to the west. I can't imagine it has anything to do with that volcano in Mexico. I don't think that's the issue, but there certainly are fires out to the west and lots of smoke in the high atmosphere, and that is certainly affecting uh, our ability to see those perfectly blue, pristine skies, but will not affect us in any way whatsoever. Talking about smoke, we had smoke a little bit closer to home in Farmington Hills just a couple of days ago. Farmington Hills apartment complex and 12 mile road between Orchard Lake and Middle Belt uh, did catch fire. It was a major event. Tenants did make it out safely. Two firefighters were injured. One was treated and uh, taken to the local hospital by the West Bloomfield paramedics. Uh, the West Bloomfield Fire Department very involved in this. Of course, right across our, our border to the, uh, to the south, Crews did a really good job, according to Don Shinsky, the fire uh, chief in uh, Farmington Hills, and he gave us a big nod in West Bloomfield for the great work and assistance that we provided as well. I talked to our fire chief, Greg Flynn, this morning on the phone. He said uh, he was really proud of everybody. Things went really well. A great example of cooperation between two neighboring departments. I think over eight stations or units have responded to this. Uh, crews really had uh, quite a, a, a ordeal. As you can see, the fire was in the upper area of this apartment complex, and so the fire crews had to get up in the roof and start tearing apart drywall. You, you think of firefighters fighting a fire from the outside, and we'll probably have Greg uh, Flynn on TV with us tomorrow to talk about this in greater detail, but you think about the work that they do, and you think about that, that picture that we just had up with the fire crew, and they're throwing water from high atop the fire or, you know, uh, and a big ladder and spraying water, but a lot of the work and the really hard work and the dangerous work goes on inside the building where they're tearing apart drywall, taking apart components of the building to get into the pockets where uh, the fire is. Red Cross and the City of Farmington Hills are working with the apartment management company to find alternative housing for those people that have been displaced by this fire. Thanks to our good friends at Fox 2 um, who uh, covered this extensively and provided some of those pictures for us this morning. Good job by our local neighborhood fire departments and they, they have a great network when something happens in our region or in our county they all communicate help out each other and that is certainly the case here um, and uh, just a minor injury that did require some treatment so uh, you may have seen this news on cranes cranes Detroit business and this has really been 
uh, they didn't report it from our perspective, but uh, this shopping center that you see on TV right now, where Whole Foods is anchored, and we're also a little bit further down the way, our brand new location for Schuler Books is also um, is also in that mall. Well, that mall is up for auction, and they are asking for a minimum bid of $9.5 million for a 157-square-foot property in Orchard Lake Road near 14 mile road. It sits on over 31 acres and is 83% leased. It's a very active place. Uh, now, I I think when you dig into this story, it, it doesn't really feel to me like this is a troubled property. It's, it's highly leased, um, but it does seem from the story in Cranes that the, uh, the listing from the company is from a company that is trying to divest itself of a lot of these properties. Of course, Whole Foods, Dunham Sports, Walgreens, Schuler Books, and others are in this complex. Um, auction happens June 6th through 8th. Uh, the, the lease at Whole Foods runs until November of 2033. Three Walgreens in there till 2059. I'm sure the folks at Schuler's didn't sign a month to month lease either. Dunham's in there until 2025. So um, I, I expect it's going to be a change of ownership. I don't know, but it'll be a change of ownership and hopefully won't impact of these wonderful and important retailers in our community. So uh, that is the news from, uh, from that story happening, of course, right here in West Bloomfield with one of our major shopping malls. We're going to take a break. When we come back, uh, a really exciting, innovative program that I wasn't aware of at the West Bloomfield Township Public Library that is helping you get ready for spring. We'll talk about that more, the other things going on at the library in just a minute. Good morning. I'm Dave Scott. This is The Splash Live, and we'll be right back. We'll be right back with The Splash Live. What's happening around you? Hear about state events, businesses, and from the people behind them on The Megacast, an hour-long TV, radio, and streaming show keeping you informed on the day-to-day -day news. Listen in on talks with volunteer groups, documentarians, and financial advisors. Monday to Friday with your host, Tyler Kieft. Catch The Megacast weekdays from 10 a.m. to 11 on Civic Center TV, 89.3 Lakes FM, and streaming on MyMyTV.com. And now, back to The Splash Live. Well, good morning and welcome back to The Splash Live. Dave Scott, and we are delighted to be joined this morning by Emily Tobin of the West Bloomfield Township Public Library. Emily, good morning. Welcome to The Splash. Good morning, Dave. How are you? I'm fantastic. Even happier to have an incredible library like we have here in West Bloomfield. You guys do a great job over there. And when, when I saw this... Uh, information about your seed library. It was like, well, that, <laughs> that is a really great idea. And uh, Jared, why don't you put the first picture up? There you go. So there is a picture. Uh, it looks like one of those libraries that they have around the communities with a couple of books in them, right? And it's, it's like a little birdhouse with bird, with not bird seed in it, but with seeds in there that you can plant in your yard. So Emily, tell us the whole story. There's the picture. Tell us what's going on with that. Yep. So it's a, so it's actually, you're correct. It's housed in a little free library over at our West Acres branch. Um, and it's something that patrons have been asking for, for a while. Um, seed libraries aren't a, a new thing, um, but it's something new for our community. And some things that people may not know about West Acres, that when West Acres as a community, when they, when they started, people were actually given a plot of land and they were expected to farm that land. So we think that it really ties into the, to the West Acres community really well. And that's why we chose to put it over at that branch. Okay, so how does a, I mean, I know how to check out a book, but how does a seed library work? So for seeds, we actually let, let you take up to three seed packets a week. There are over 45 different varieties in that little free library. So there's fruits, vegetables, um, flowers, herbs, um, and you can check out those three packets. Um, we ask that you just let us know what you have taken so that we can keep an eye on it and replenish what we need. And then you don't need to bring or save seed um, for the library. So you don't need to bring anything back. Um, it's really a sustainable um, 
living situation. So we really wanna promote sustainable living within the community. So patrons are encouraged to share harvests with their neighbors or to save seed for themselves for next year. All right, so they're gonna take these seeds, they're gonna plant them, do all the things they need to do. Uh, maybe come to the library, get a book and learn how to you know, plant those seeds and have them flourish. And I know you've had some programs that have come and gone, but uh, but it's a great idea. So you go to the you go to the library, you get the seeds, you plant them, and then you get a chance to share the food with your neighbors, tell a great story. Does this get people involved, do you think, in growing and get get them excited about growing in their own backyard? Absolutely. I think that many people, sometimes they want to start a garden and maybe they're afraid and they don't want to take that risk on their own. So this lets the, it's pretty, pretty low risk to take out seeds from your library and just just try. Um, we do have a lot of um, gardening events this summer um, from big names. So there are the English Gardens is coming to do a program. Bees in the D is coming to do a program. We have um, a program by Keep Growing Detroit, and those are going to be offered at both branches. So if people are kind of hesitant about gardening or don't know where to start, um, there there's programming for all levels of gardening um, at the library. All right, well, I'll hold it up. It, it's not green, so, you know, I, <laughs> I'm probably one of the people that would need a little bit of help, you know, to get it all going. But it's cool. It's a great idea. It gets people thinking um, and gets them motivated to get into gardening in our community. Great job. Um, and that, as we see the picture, that this program is available at the, and they can pick the seeds up at the West Acres branch. Is that correct? Correct. Um, at the main branch, we are participating um, in the One Seed, One State program. So all the seed libraries in Michigan, every year they pick out a seed to promote. And this year it is um, Grand Rapids lettuce. So if you come to the main branch, you can still participate. Um, you can come to the adult information desk and you'll get a little packet of lettuce seeds, which are also relatively easy to grow and low risk, and a little pamphlet on how to grow them. So those are at the adult um, information desk and anybody can drop by and pick those up. So how long does it, do you know, how long does it take to grow lettuce in your yard? If you were to come by, get seeds now, um, when am I inviting a friend over for a seeds or salad? Well, according to this, it's easy <laughs> to germinate. <laughs> My dad grows lettuce every year and really? it's fairly easy as long as you can keep the bunnies away from it, which... We have lots of bunny friends here at the library. Yeah, there's um, like, there are bunnies all over West Bloomfield. I see so many. You probably got to put a little bunny fence up or something, right? And, yeah, exactly. But okay. you can see... You can see lettuce leaves as early as 30 days after planting. Wow. Okay. Sounds fun. Um, thank you for getting us motivated. Um, I know there are a lot of other programs. We're going to have you back and your colleagues back to talk about them. But maybe you just give us a little tease. Coming up in early June is the Summer Reading Kickoff Program. Tell us all about that. So summer reading kickoff is June 10th. That's a Saturday. It's in our back parking lot and there it's from 11 to four and there will be lots of events back there. Um, we always do do a big party for summer reading kickoff. Um, this year, there's something new. Um, we're doing bingo as our summer reading um, <laughs> kickoff. Um, so it's the theme is all together now. So bingo kind of fits right in there. There's a bingo card to keep track of your reading in our Beanstack program. Um, and we have um, gift, gift baskets where people can enter a drawing, a ticket to, to win prizes for their reading. Um, but we always do a great job with our, our summer reading kickoff. So there will be lots of things to do um, in the in the back parking lot. June 10th, um, 11 to 4. And then at West Acres, we'll have a midsummer party for their um, kickoff, and that is mid July. And I assume the summer reading program is targeted to youth, correct? Nope, it is all ages. So youth, teen, and adult can um, take place, take, take part in that summer reading program, and they can all read for prizes. Excellent. So get out, read. Um, nothing better than curling up with a good book when you got a day off and on a rainy day or really any day. And uh, and then share the experience with other, other people in our community. Sounds like a great program. June 10th is going to be a very busy day in West Bloomfield. We'll talk more about that coming up. Emily, 
Thank you so much. I know you're busy. There's a ton of things going on at the library. We love the library here in West Bloomfield. By the way, um, not too long ago, there was this historical program. Paul Wilbur came over from Pine Lake and did a program about his house. It was a Sunday. I thought, you know, maybe we would have, uh, you know, 20, 30, 40 people show up. It was standing room only. Yep. People were so excited. We've got that video on Civic Center TV now. Uh, you know, here's just a local guy who uh, who uh, maintains and has fully restored a beautiful historic home in our community and then told the history of his neighborhood so well. Um, and that's just one of a zillion different programs you do. People love them and they, they turn out. Do you, did, does it surprise you to see on a beautiful sunny day how many people come in for these presentations? It, it doesn't because I, he... Paul, is, he is such a, a nice guy and he's such an interesting guy with such an interesting house. And I think people really love the programs that are local. So when there's somebody local that's presenting or if it's a history of Detroit or something that is area related, if it's, you know, we do, we did something with Powabic, um, when it's when we bring in somebody something that has Michigan history attached to it, people really gravitate towards that. So I'm I'm not surprised at all that we can get those numbers. All right, Emily, thank you very much for your enthusiasm, the hard work at the library. Say hello to everybody over there and uh, have a great day. Thanks for joining us. You too. Thank you, Dave. All right, Emily Tobin, check it in for the West Bloomfield Township Public Library. A lot of other stories to get to. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back. Good morning. You're watching The Splash Live. We'll be right back with The Splash Live. Stop by West Bloomfield Town Hall June 14th and get your health in check at the 14th Annual Greater West Bloomfield Health and Wellness Fair. Over 40 businesses, organizations, and vendors take the time to showcase healthy practices, tips, and resources for the community. Young or old, there's something for everyone and everybody. 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Wednesday, June 14th, the 14th Annual Greater West Bloomfield Health and Wellness Fair. This community update from Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Watch Civic Center TV with our brand new live captions. To turn on live captions, go to civiccentertv.com and click Watch Live. In your web browser, click on the Options tab in the top right and find the Accessibilities tab. Then just switch on live captions to heighten your enjoyment of our local programming. Thank you so much for watching Civic Center TV. And now, back to The Splash Live. Good morning. Welcome back to The Splash Live. Dave Scott here with our little old local West Bloomfield television show, keeping you up to date on what's going on in our community. Awful lot to get to today. We'll start over at West Bloomfield, uh, Henry Ford Hospital, West Bloomfield, where they have had some great recognitions lately. Uh, reporting from uh, Facebook, they say out of hundreds of nurses nominated statewide, Henry Ford nurses John Roberts and Jerry Howard were recognized as runners up at the 35th annual Nightingale Awards for Nursing Excellence at a recent ceremony. The program hosted by Oakland University's School of Nursing celebrates achievements of nurses who demonstrate in inspirational leadership traits and go above and beyond to deliver exceptional quality for patients, something that doesn't surprise me at all because really nurses are incredibly amazing. John Roberts in particular, nurse manager of our medical intensive care unit, surgical intensive care unit and medical progressive care unit at the West Bloomfield Hospital was named runner up in the excellence in nursing leadership category. Congratulations, John. And Jerry Howard, the program manager for Henry Ford at Home, was recognized as runner-up for the Nursing in the Community Award. Congratulations, both of them. And uh, we wish them and everyone at Henry Ford a good day there. And by the way, like everybody else, um, if you're looking for a job, <laughs> they need more nurses. At Henry Ford Hospital, West Bloomfield, go to their website. You can find all of the information. West Bloomfield Preschool Academy, and the school district is hiring for the 2023-24 school year. If you're interested in working with early childhood or school-aged children, here is a great opportunity for you. QR code right in the screen will give you just a minute 
you can scan that and get all of the information. But if you, if you enjoy being around kids, if you enjoy an opportunity to share your experiences, whether you're a full-time teacher or maybe you just be a teacher's aide or assistant, this is a great opportunity. It's just one of the many jobs available through the West Winfield School District, and uh, they are certainly working on plans for the summer and for next year. Scan the QR code. It will get you right to where you want to go. Okay, we uh, have a lot going on here on June 10th. One of the big events happening in our community is the Youth Assistance Food Truck Rally, and uh, that's going to be going on at Orchard Mall. Now, this event changes. In the past, this event was a Friday afternoon, Friday evening event, and we had the food trucks and the entertainment. Um, but this year, it's going to be a real shindig because it's going to happen all day long on Saturday, the 10th of June. So lots of great food trucks, lots of fun, and a great opportunity for you to help with West Bloomfield Youth Assistance raise some money. Food, there'll be adult beverages, there'll be entertainment, um, lots of fun for the kids. It'll be a family-friendly environment. We, uh, we hope that you come by. Now, our production crew always does a really good job putting together promotional videos, and we're working on one right now for this. But I was on Facebook this morning, and uh, somebody um, associated with West Bloomfield Youth Assistance beat me to the punch. So, Jared, we're going to want audio and video and the whole shebang. Let's roll this promotional video that I found on Facebook this morning for the food truck rally. Hello, West Bloomfield. My name is James Scrivo, and I've been honored to be principal here at Scotch for the last 13 years, a member of the community here for the last 24 years. One of the coolest things that I've been able to be part of is being on the West Bloomfield Youth Assistance Board. And June 10th, we are going to do the biggest food truck rally yet. We have over 20 food trucks coming to Orchard Lake Mall, which you can find on the corner of West Maple and Orchard Lake Road. We have bounce houses for the kids, face paintings for the kids. We have a wine and beer tent. Uh, we have lots of activities. There'll be tons of pictures and opportunities to get to know your community members. All proceeds from this event go back to our youth in West Bloomfield. There can't be a better cause. For those that aren't afraid of a little water, we will also have a dunk tank. Have a wonderful day and we hope to see you June 10th at our West Bloomfield Youth Assistance Food Truck Rally. Jared, now we we got to get a promo together like that. That <laughs> That was fantastic. So good job in the promo. We'll keep running that, and uh, and we'll con continue working on our official business-like promo for the big food truck rally. So um, if you've not had an opportunity to enjoy all of the unique foods that you might find at a food truck rally, I thought I would share this picture with you this morning from Facebook. Oh, my goodness, look at that burger. That is a diet buster, my friends. That comes from Tim's gourmet sliders this is one of their 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 new items i'm just going to read here from the post on facebook this morning this is a double cheese with bacon and beer cheese slider that you know what i jared i don't know when i think of a slider i think of a, this is not a little little hamburger at all i think one of those little ones the white castle burgers but uh, this is their newest menu item. They start with eight ounces of prime ground steak, seasoned to perfection. Sear it on a sizzling hot grill. Sounds good. Add smoked bacon strips. Yep, we can see that in there. Um, drizzle our truck made beer cheese. We see that all over there on each layer and finish it up with some beautiful, wonderful buns. So uh, there it is. Looks really yummy. Tim's Gourmet Sliders Food Truck. And I, I assume they're going to be at the Food Truck Rally. They're at a lot of local events. They've been all over the area lately. Take a look at my calendar here on uh, the 25th. That's tomorrow. They're going to be in Commerce Township at 6161 Strawberry Circle. And on the 26th on Ardmore Drive in Bloomfield Township. They're here in West Bloomfield all the time. And uh, we're going to try to get Tim on the air to see... Um, I don't think I should schedule that next to one of the cardiologists from uh, Henry Ford. But we'll see if we get Tim on here and find out how good that burger tastes. It, it certainly looks absolutely great. Jumping ahead to the big Memorial Weekend right around the corner, we couldn't be more thrilled to 
be in Kegel Harbor, Sylvan Lake, and at Pine Lake for Memorial Day again this year. It's a tradition here at Civic Center TV, and that tradition includes festivities in Kegel Harbor. We've got the Kegel Harbor Parade, of course, going on, and in addition, the memorial service that happens before. So 930 memorial service is going to be happening at The Rock, right up on Orchard Lake and Cass um, Lake Road in Kegel Harbor, right in the heart of Kegel. Kegel. Then we're going to go back down to Cass Lake Road. The parade this year starts on Beachland Avenue and, uh, and Cass Lake, and it starts in Beachland, which is north on Cass Lake Road and then works south toward Orchard Lake Road and runs right by the big reviewing stand where we will be broadcasting live right in front of the Roosevelt, the real Roosevelt Elementary School. So um, that's going to be a lot of fun, made even more fun because one of our favorite television couples, our good friends Woody Woodruff and Ronnie Dahl will be hosting as they did last year. A lot of fun. Everyone in town knows him. Tyler Keefe will probably be down there street side sharing information and uh, you'll see it all just like that right here on Civic Center TV. Uh, we'll be broadcasting it live and then it will be repeating throughout the day and the following week so you can probably even go back to our on-demand area check out last year's parade I'm sure it's still there and a lot of fun we uh, we also mentioned that we'll be over in Sylvan Lake and if you're really quick and moving around and staying away from the traffic and you want to make both parades you actually can this the Kegel parade begins at 10 the Sylvan Lake parade will begin at 1130 we'll have crews at both Sylvan Lake parade won't be live but we'll have that covered for you with our camera crews we have in the past and uh, we're doing our very best to make all the arrangements to cover the memorial service and Memorial Day at the Pine Lake Cemetery as we have in the past so very busy Memorial Day weekend and those are just some of the activities there are activities going on and starting in in virtually all of our communities and a lot of our neighboring communities and, and all over the state for goodness sakes for Memorial Weekend so get out and enjoy the weather is going to be absolutely great we hope you enjoy it just one other note to put on your calendar West Memphis High School Honors Convocation for our graduating seniors is going to be going on. Mark your calendar for the 7th of June. We'll be at the West Memphis High School. We will have that live as we do each and every year on Civic Center TV and along with um, the actual commencement ceremonies, which happen a little bit further down the road. Uh, last year, they moved the ceremonies out to Pine Knob and it worked out absolutely terrific. It was a lot of fun and I, I, we're going to be there again. We've got some details to put together, but we'll be broadcasting live from Pine Knob and as we have done every year since I've been here and that's a long time we'll, we'll be broadcasting that live for you so grandmas and grandpas and moms and dads and cousins and brothers and sisters who are anywhere else around the country will be able to watch all that um, real quickly before I go I want to remind you to make sure you tune in to some of the big programs that we're running on Civic Center TV right now you can go to our website you can go back and check out the West Bloomfield Youth Assistance Youth Recognition Awards. You can go back and watch a video from Michigan Week. Go check out that video we talked about earlier in the program. Paul Wilbur talking about his amazing, historic home on Pine Lake Road, right in Pine Lake, and the history uh, of our community uh, evolving from a community of Native Americans to what it is today. Those and much more on Civic Center TV this week. We hope you tune in. That's going to be it for the splash today. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning. Enjoy the great weather. Tyler Keith is standing by, and he will be here in just a moment with the Megacast. Have a good day. We'll see you soon.